Despite increased pressure, the government have not yet given much real information on when and how the lockdown will end. But with the death toll rising much higher than 20,000 now, how effective has the government been in stopping the spread of the virus? Well, to discuss this further is General Practitioner Dr. Jero Bayada. Dr. Bayada, thanks for joining us. How effective have the lockdown measures been? It's certainly helping a lot because uh, people have to transfer it one person to another and we don't have a, a vaccine on the horizon. So complete lockdown really can only end once we've got sufficient testing for enough people so that we know who's got it and who should be out and about and who shouldn't. Uh, and when a vaccine is available. So a vaccine is going to take 12 months at the very least to turn up. And the only option we've got otherwise is to lock down and to stop uh, spreading it from one person to another. Um, you know, I've read statistics on this and uh, I can't cite them exactly because I don't remember the source, but um, my reading was that if 90% of people manage to stay home successfully, which is impossible because key workers and other workers need to keep going, uh, that this would be over in four weeks. Certainly if it was 70%, it would be over within three months. As I said, the virus can't get anywhere on its own. It needs to be passed, and if there's not enough people passing it around, it will fizzle out in our own uh, way. So we, we will get it, we will recover or not from it, um, but then that means there's no further source of the virus for further people to spread it on. And Doctor, there have been reports, haven't there, that ethnic minorities are worse affected by the virus. What do you think is the reason for this? So yes, we've got uh, statistics. Uh, from the Intensive Care National Audit and Research Centre, I think it's called. Uh, they audited 2,000 patients in ITU a, a very short period of time ago and found that only, uh, although 13% of the population are black and Asian and minority ethnic uh, populations, uh, almost three times that was uh, in ITU with serious complications of COVID-19. And uh, the socioeconomic factors, so uh, people from these communities tend to be poorer, live in less affluent and more crowded housing, so social distancing is more difficult. Um, almost 20% of the NHS is made up from black and Asian uh, people. Uh, you know, they form the backbone, backbone of the NHS. Uh, transport workers in London, 25% of those are black and Asian. And again, they've carried on working throughout the crisis. But actually, we think the big deal is when you figure in that doctors and surgeons who don't have those socioeconomic factors, you would assume, are still falling foul of this much, much more than their white British colleagues. Uh, we think it's the, the melanin in the skin. So the pigment in the skin is there to protect the skin. It blocks out UV rays, uh, but it also blocks out our ability to make vitamin D. And vitamin D is essential to uh, our immunity and especially with respiratory infections. And so I've been advising very widely that um, all people, but especially black and Asian uh, uh, colleagues and patients and everybody takes a vitamin D supplement during this time. Dr. Jero Bayada, thank you very much for your time.